The internet is an amazing and wonderful place, but it's also a horrible cesspool of the worst filth and disgusting aspects of human existence. For most, it's a tool, something to be used as a means to an end. Be that finding a job, banking, checking mail, or beating it till... Well, you get the point. Regardless, one of the most important features of the internet is communication. I mean, that's why you're here, right? For a message from me to you. Online communication has brought the entire world together in ways no one imagined possible. But is that a good thing is a question constantly brought up in philosophical debates about this magic web of wonders. I like to think it is. I mean, how else would I be able to keep track of how fat and ugly all my old classmates from high school are getting? That's just me though, a nice, innocent guy on the internet. However, with the good also comes the bad. Instant communication, and a gathering place for it, has brought together terrorist groups, hate groups, and worst of all, the most vile, horrible, despicable spawn of human evil, fandoms. A fandom is a toxic group of elitist buttholes that love something so much they begin to think their knowledge of trivia regarding said subject makes them better than other people. A fandom creates a mob mentality, a lot like a street gang, where if, for instance, someone says Sonic is gay, then the entirety of the Sonic fandom will come down on that hater with the hammer of God. Okay, I'm exaggerating, but not by much. There are many fandoms which either sprouted from or grew exponentially due to the advent of the internet. However, there is one group that may be the most notorious, most demonized, and most widely misunderstood fandom ever. They are the furries. Yes, people who dress up in giant fur-covered mascot suits and never shut the fuck up on message boards. These people have been accused of everything from being mentally challenged to sexual deviancy. But do they really deserve all the flack? I mean, what's wrong with people who like to dress up in costumes and hang out together? Well, that's why you're here, isn't it? For one simple reason. It's time to dive balls deep into the corner of the human mind that, well, it's a little different. It's time for us to understand what we previously did not. So buckle up, kitties, and let's get weird. This is a furry, and believe it or not, there are millions of them. Yes, you heard me right, this isn't just some stupid American thing. The furry fandom exists in every corner of the world and simply isn't going anywhere. So, I don't know deal with it? Okay, well, I guess I was kind of wrong. That's not a furry. It's a fursuit made in the image of a fursona. The furry is inside the fursuit, but we'll get into that more in a bit. A furry is a person who belongs to the furry fandom, which on paper seems simple. It's someone who is a fan of anthropomorphic animal characters. I guess that's one way of putting it. I do like Pokemon and totally wanted to bang Lola Bunny from Space Jam when I was a kid, but I definitely don't consider myself a furry. Anyway, many furries have what they consider a fursona, and this is where things get a little complicated. See, a fursona can simply be an idea, or it can manifest itself into an online avatar, or a costume, or even go as far as to become a lifestyle. But a fursona generally isn't something you simply create, like a D&D character. It's more like an entire personality. For many furries, it's who they wish they were, or whom they actually feel they are, on the inside. Then there's the furries who actually think they're part cat or something, but we'll get to that as well. After the initial concept of the fursona is conceived, then comes the design. Do you want to be a furry, or a scaly, or perhaps a hybrid? I'd want to be a pig duck stoat. Tell me that's not cool. To be fair, some people make amazing costumes and art for their fursonas. It's legitimately inspiring to love something that much to put that much time and care into it, and they should be commended for their skills. Still weird though. So after you're all set up with your sweet new fursuit, you're free to go to a fur con or to a fur meet and partake in fur activities. Simple, harmless fun. In fact, much of the outward disgust and negative opinions toward furries comes from an episode of CSI from the early 2000s where they depicted a furry orgy and made the poor furry bastards out to be the bad guys. At the time, the fandom still wasn't well known. For most of us, that was our first look into the culture. Don't get me wrong, there is a lot of weird stuff going on in the furry world. World. There is 100% furry orgies in just literally anything you can imagine. Three horses on one polar bear. A panda on a lizard being watched by a unicorn. I don't fucking know, it's out there. But that could be said of everything, not just furries. So you can't really hate on them for that. And as long as they're being safe, then, you know, 
Good for them. However, even without the stigma of perverse humping practices, I think the furries still would have had a hard time with something like mass acceptance simply because of taboos. In most modern societies, it's not considered normal for grown adults to run around dressed up like foxes and cats. Also, there's all the borderline bestiality. But let's get real, it's simply too easy to pick on furries. They're weird, and their weirdness is out there for you to see. It's like shooting the broad side of the barn. It's not even fun. They have stupid words, and the vocal minority is obnoxious on the internet. However, that's the same with every vocal minority. That being said, if we're not gonna take a big stinky dookie on their chest, then what's the point of all this? Well, it's interesting. Here we have an extremely large group of people that have a very specific and similar interest. But what is it about dressing up in a fursuit that's so appealing? You can't argue with the numbers, clearly there's something to this. So. What is it? Well, part of it is anonymity. One aspect of what makes the internet so great and shitty is that you have the option to not represent yourself. As a furry in a fursuit, you also have that option. You can be whoever you want to be and do whatever you want to do. You can act in public however you would like because people disassociate the suit and the person inside. Well, generally. I can't. They freak me out. Always have. Maybe it was The Shining. Whatever. Anyway, many testimonials from furries state that while in character, they simply feel better. No anxiety. They say that they can be who they want to be and not what society expects them to be because of things that are totally masked by the fursuit. Age, skin color, gender, weight. It's all hidden. The only thing left is personality. And that's a beautiful thing. It really is. I think all of us want to throw off some of society's shackles and just be who we are on the inside. A lot of us can't because we're scared. Or maybe we simply are unable to do certain things because of the circumstances of our birth. Regardless, if you felt you had a way out of that, I bet you'd take it. I'm all about being who you want to be. I think that's great. Honestly, even if you're just some dude who wants to fornicate with a stuffed turtle while some other dude in a frog mask watches and wax it, all the more power to you. There are definitely people in the furry fandom that are obnoxious, socially inept weirdos, believe me. I read and watched enough crap on them to know. However, it's like that with everything. Look at those boobs from the Nintendo Treehouse. There's also furries that are creepy ferverts and probably horrible people that dress up in suits so that they can grope the shit out of you at a con and get away with it. And while those types of things are pretty messed up, the core ideas of being a furry are kind of fascinating and even make sense once you've corrected your spinal injury from all the cringe. The emphasis on the fursona and the idea of being someone else has more layers than a Shrek sandwich. What we're looking at here is a classic human struggle between the id, the ego, and the superego. Simply put, the id is your animal inside. Anger, fear, hunger, lust. The selfish survival and desire aspects of all animals. The ego is what you perceive yourself to be, and the superego is how you present yourself. You may be a disgusting slob who eats with their feet, but you won't do that in a five-star restaurant. Well, maybe you will, but that's the sign of a deeper problem. What it comes down to is that you're not allowed to be yourself in modern society. At least, not wholly. Part of this is due to the fact that what you are is partially intangible. You don't even know yourself. Go ahead, leave me a comment below telling me who you are without using something you like, something you do, or how you look. All those things are aspects of your personality, not you as a being. You aren't your address, or where you came from, or your favorite color, or your favorite band. You're not the contents of your wallet. You're not your fucking khakis. That's just stuff. And while it does describe things you own, or your current preferences, it doesn't get to the deeper part of who you are. You are the most you when you're sitting quietly and not thinking about how to act or how you look. In fact, you're the most you when you're thinking about nothing at all and are just existing. Ever arrived at a destination and kind of forgot how you got there? That's what I'm talking about. Society on its base level is a system humans created to keep things in check. Each society has rules and boundaries, different sets of mannerisms, languages, beliefs, all put in place to keep people in line so people can make money and not eat each other and stuff. It's certainly important, but there's no specific place for who you are within it. 
Society doesn't care. It's a broad range of rules based around what the average person should do. Society controls what is acceptable and what isn't, creates trends and popularity, and squashes things through a mob mentality that don't fit. All of us deal with traversing society's norms every day because we're constantly aware of the backlash that would come from the rest of society if we acted outside of it. So when you're out and about at the mall, you're using your superego to navigate the intricate web of social norms to safely make your way through your day. It's impossible not to use that superego without getting arrested for stealing or getting hit by a bus for walking out into the street. You acknowledge the rules of society subconsciously because you grew up with them. It's second nature. But the ego is a different story. Because of your ego, you dress a certain way, wear your hair like you do. You select your favorite bracelet to wear at the mall. So where do these material things come into play with who we are? Well, we define ourselves by our actions, our likes, and our looks. We define ourselves by our heritage and the company we keep, the jobs we have. These things are a part of you because you define them as a part of you, and they represent the tangible aspect of your persona. Just like a furry, you built that persona, and you acted out every day. The word itself comes from the Greek word for mask, persona. It's something you wear over your being to give others a way to identify you. However, it isn't set in stone. It's your choice. You can be whoever you want to be, whenever you want to. You can like whatever you want, look however you want, to a degree. You can even lie and say that you like things you don't. It's called acting, but you're free to do it because of how malleable persona are. You still have to remember to look both ways before a truck smears you across downtown, but when you free yourself from the titles and affiliations and, let's be honest, the bullshit, you can begin to find personal freedom. Life is a game. Society is the rules, and our persona is a mask we wear over ourselves which isn't restrained by our dedication to one thing over the other. We can change our favorite color or our favorite band, and while that does change what defines us, it doesn't destroy who we are as an individual. This is the same idea with furries. The fursuit and fursona are malleable, they can change, but they are accepted in their own society, by their own rules. It doesn't change the fursona underneath, just like you changing your favorite color doesn't mean you aren't you anymore. The idea of the furry society is to change the rules of society, to allow for more unique self-expression, to allow for ridiculousness, silliness, and funniness to run amok without a societal backlash, to feel free of the restraints society shackles on us on a daily basis. Are there issues with the furry fandom? Of course. There's tons. The fact that too many people take the fursuit as a means of consent to being groped is just one of them. But tell me a fandom that doesn't have issues. Racism, sexism, homophobia. There's so many things wrong with every part of our society. If the core concepts of the furry fandom are self-expression, freedom, and happiness no matter who you are, I think I could get on board with that. And while I'd recommend working on your normal human persona more than an imaginative animal one, it's good to get out of your own skin sometimes and become someone or something Something else entirely. Such a thing could help you understand the person you really want to be outside the fursuit. Hopefully you understand furries a little better now. I know I sure do. And before you ask, no I don't want a if. I'm way too much of a mundane. Though I appreciate the offer. And I'm just not a big fan of full body suits. Sorry furries, just sounds a little too sweaty for me. Either way, my name's Ryan and if you like this video and want to see more, make sure to check out my other show, The Real Truth. Covering furries was a little out of the ordinary and maybe made some people mad. I don't know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like below if you did and make sure to let me know about other things you don't understand and maybe I'll cover them in the future. That's all for this one. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you all next time. Toodles!